Hi, I'm Joel Daniel Phillips, and uh, this is my studio in Oakland, California. Hi, <laughs> come on in. Welcome to the space. Um, I do big drawings of people uh, from my street corner action in San Francisco, Six and Mission. Um, I used to I lived there for a long time. It was my first first real art studio. I moved there right after college, and um, I I didn't know anything about the street corner. And this whole body of work started as me trying to understand where I'd moved to and what I was doing. And these um, these people are the the sort of people that we don't know how to deal with in society, the sort of people that we don't know how to respond to or talk to, um, because they, I mean, there's a lot of cultural barriers dividing us from them, but they're, they're social dark matter is what I call them. The, this is me trying to take that, that area and bring light to it and take that, that social dark matter and, and reverse the relationship and um, turn these anonymous people into celebrities, tell their stories. Hi, my name is Valerie Levy, and I'm here in the studio of artist Joel Daniel Phillips today, and we are going to discover a little bit more about his work and his process. And uh, hi, Joel, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I started drawing in 2009. Um, I was at an off-campus program in New York. I was studying graphic design, and I had an open studio class where I had to figure out how to make some actual artwork and I had no idea what the hell I was going to do. And uh, I was doing stupid, stupid things like dipping tea bags in discarded paint and throwing them on the wall and um, somebody gave me a jar of charcoal nubs and, uh, and they were like, well maybe you should try drawing and I was like, oh, I used to draw when I was a kid, why not? And I fell in love with it, I just instantly fell in love with it and the first drawings I did were absolute shit. But I have spent the next five years since then, was it five years now, 2009, six years now. Um, trying to figure out how to draw and learn how to draw and so it's, uh, it's been a process. Well I'd say that the level of mastery you've achieved in six years is kind of remarkable. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, I, yeah, it's, I mean within those six years it's been thousands and thousands of hours of drawing. What if, I mean. some, what if that person had never given you the jar of charcoal nuts? I don't know, I, I keep what trying to think how, how can I thank this person for that because <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, like, those random moments that totally change the course of your life. And yeah. it wasn't planned, it wasn't thought out, it wasn't, you know, I didn't, I, I was going to be a graphic designer. And um, so I don't know, I need to thank her somehow. But yeah. what, what would I be doing instead? I, had, I mean, graphic well, design probably. Well, a jar probably. of charcoal yeah. changed your life, so yeah. anything can happen, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, thanks, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you just started drawing six years ago. When did you start working at this scale? Because this is pretty ambitious. Um, this was basically what I started out doing. Um, I, I mean, the first drawings I did weren't full-size drawings of, of, of the human figure. They were facial portraits, and they were even slightly larger scale. Um, but I just, I think I had a pack of those, like, standard art student uh, Strathmore sheets at 24 by 36 or whatever they are, and so I started drawing on that. And um, then I found a roll of... of paper and the trash on the street in New York and I was like oh maybe I'll do a bigger drawing and decided to do a drawing of a homeless gentleman that I met on the street in New York on that I did a life-size drawing and it was absolute shit but I loved it and I wanted to do more and um yeah so how did you choose to draw that man and how do you choose your subjects was that yeah um it's, I mean, this maybe makes me sound like a one-trick pony, but um, I st when I first started drawing people, I, I started drawing people I met on the street. And at the time, it was it, I was in New York. I was my studio was on Twenty Seventh and Seventh, so it was right in Midtown. 
And I had never lived in a big city before. I would never done uh, the metropolitan thing. And I we had a particularly hard time dealing with the cultural uh, juxtaposition between West Coast and East Coast. And the way that people interact with you on the street in New York is very different from San Francisco or from anywhere that I'd lived in the Bay Area. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I was so frustrated with the way that people were would not make eye contact. They would not uh, say hi to you. It was very felt very brusque. It felt very uh, kind of angry. And so I started stopping people um, on the street, and I would approach one in every ten people, and I would I would try to get them to stop and uh, let me take their photograph so I could go draw it. And I titled the drawings whatever their response was to me saying hi. Can I do a drawing of you? And most of which was like fuck off or what are you gonna do masturbate to it or like all of these <laughs> ridiculous things. Um, so that's that's kind of was what I, I started out doing. It was like it was just I wanted to, for for me, drawing is all about understanding my surroundings. Um, and uh, I think is is Jean Le Corbusier who said um, the best way to understand something is to draw it. And uh, he was an architect and he he actually did a lot of fine art as well. Um, but I've found that to be a, v- a very true statement because for me the process is more about. Well, it's more about the process than it is about the finished piece, and people kind of laugh at that when I say that because they're very meticulously crafted drawings, but it's about understanding this person or this area or this social question or whatever it is that my mind is is focused on through the tip of my pencil and through the process of recreating and and looking at this thing so meticulously. Um, So, yeah, New York is about that. Okay, so you're in New York... Somebody gives you the fateful jar of charcoal nubs, but eventually you move to San Francisco mm-hmm. to Sixth and Mission, which is one of the, I would say, maybe most challenging corners of the city. Yeah, um, yeah, the most challenging corner, maybe. I mean, I, I moved there not knowing anything about it. I moved from straight from college, found these guys on Craigslist who were building out a live work art space and I was like this sounds amazing I want to make art like I want to figure out how to do this and um, so I meet them on Skype they're cool send the money without ever seeing the space and then uh, drive my budget truck across the country I flew back up to Seattle from I was in school in Santa Barbara flew back up to Seattle went to Goodwill and bought some furniture and then drove a budget truck down um, and uh, I, I was parking my, my budget truck on, on heroin needles in the back alley. My first like glimpse of this space is this trash filled alley that's, you know, drug paraphernalia, guy sleeping in his own vomit, you know, me, and me being like, okay, I thought this was in Soma. Soma's supposed to be nice. I've been to San Francisco. This is not what I thought, you know, it was going to be. And, um, and so I, I started, yeah, sort of drawing people from that street corner because of, of that dichotomy of not knowing how to deal with it. And again, that kind of being the root of my process is trying to use this as a tool to understand my surroundings. Um, and so I, I, you came by and asked me if I would, I would do a body of work. And I was, I, you know, I just graduated and I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm, I don't know how to do art or whatever. I've never done this as a job. And, and you, you, I remember you came into my, my little studio space and you saw a printout of a drawing I'd done for in college on my wall. And you're like, how long till I can do seven more of these? <laughs> and, and I was like, ah, seven months? I don't know. I have a day job. And, um, and so I decided to use that as a catalyst to, to do these drawings I've been wanting to do, uh, you know, exploring the people who lived on my corner. What was the drawing that I saw? And that was a homeless uh, man, right? <laughs> that was my uncle. Oh, was your uncle? <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks yeah. for the reminder. So. No, but he looks like a homeless man. Yeah. Right. Um, no, so that was a, a drawing that was from my, my senior uh, thesis project in college that was, um, it was four drawings of, uh, of members of my family, me included, um, that were to me basically trying to tell my dad that I'm going to be an artist and my dad's a lawyer, and my brother's a lawyer, and then my uncle's an artist. And so my dad and my uncle have these very juxtaposed views of what uh, uh, vocational calling is and, and what is valid in society. And so my dad, the reason that I studied graphic design in the beginning and that I didn't you know, chase after art initially, I think, was mostly because my dad said, you know, well, you're good at doing these creative things, but you also need to have a job. And you know, his whole idea of success is... Suburbia, 2.5 cars and two kids and, you know, white picket fence, that whole thing. 
Um, or yeah, and I, and I yeah. Um, really wanted to talk about that piece, actually. Yeah. Um, Les Destins. Mm-hmm. So that piece, it was your thesis piece? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's um, four monumental portraits. Mm-hmm. And there's one of your father, one, one of, of my your brother, brother, one you, of me, and then one of my uncle. uncle. Yeah, and so that was, they were... Uh, Referencing the book uh, Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince, um, and the book is an amazing book, but it has uh, these characters that the, the little prince meets that are kind of archetypal societal flaws that the author sees. And so the titles were My Father, the Businessman, My Brother, the King, Myself, the Lamplighter, and then My Uncle, the Drunkard. And it was about, yeah, these ideas of, of what is valid or valuable as a, as a, vocational calling and, and me telling my dad I'm gonna do this I value what you do you need to value what I do I'm going this way my brother's going this way you know my, my brother's a lawyer too and, well there's and, definitely a really interesting spectrum going on because yeah. you know the one that's called my uncle the drunkard he's disheveled looking mm -hmm. and his costume if you will is completely on the other end of the spectrum from mm -hmm. your father who is in a suit, tailored yeah. suit in a chair looking very relaxed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. looking ever the part of success mm -hmm. and then your brother more aligned with your father mm -hmm. but not quite there and then you kind of bridging the gap between your uncle the drunkard or your mm -hmm. uncle the artist and you know Occupying kind of a unique space, mm -hmm. but very much a spectrum there. So yeah, one thing I think is interesting about that piece is you know the importance of of our outward appearances mm -hmm. and And if that's important and I think that your work really explores a lot of that mm -hmm. so I mean is that why you're drawn to the urban denizens of the worst street corner in San yeah. Francisco, or let's talk about maybe, what draws you maybe to Maybe I've, I've never thought, I mean, I never thought about that as being one of the things that draws me to my subjects, but actually, now that I think about it, it, it might be a big part of it. Um, because the, what I'm interested in drawing is, are the people that we don't know how to deal with, and a lot of the reasons we don't know how to deal with them is our surface differences. You know, the guy who's wearing a, you know, tattered, uh, giant's jacket that reeks to high heaven is not exactly the person you sit down next to and want to have a conversation with. At least that's not what most people would do. But I've found that a lot of these people are actually far more interesting to talk to than you know the nicely dressed lady you sat next to on BART. Um, and the reason that I'm so fascinated with them, I think in a nutshell, is, is vulnerability. Where my process involves approaching people on the street, people I don't know, I've never met before, and and uh, going up to them and saying, hey, you know, I'm an artist, I'd love to draw you, can I take your photograph? And most people would stand in a certain way and smile in a certain way. They would project how they wanted to be perceived um, because we're, we're living in such an image conscious, you know, day and age that everyone knows what the best side of their face is and, and they, they, there's, a, there's very little honesty with that. And with my subjects, there's much more honesty. There's a deeper vulnerability. There's a veil that's pulled, pulled back and part of that is in the way they dress, um, but it's also in how they stand. And, you know, it's not necessarily the reasons that they, you know, are more honest aren't necessarily good reasons. I mean, they tend to be things that are kind of sad. It's, you know, they don't give two shits because, you know, there's nowhere to go or, or nothing to lose, maybe. I don't know. I think a lot of this work comes back to an experience I had in, in high school where I, I stopped and chatted with this elderly homeless man, and he said that I was the first person who had looked him in the eye all day, and it was like 7 o'clock at night, and I remember just being floored by, you know, that, that idea that I, somebody could go an entire day without having anyone validate their existence and their value, and um, even if it's just eye contact or a hello or, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now, but I hope you have a good day. Um, and so I, the work is about me trying to take these people that we don't know how to deal with and... and bring them into the the light I guess and, and tell that story a little bit and and um, and allow people who normally wouldn't know how to interact with these individuals to interact with them in a way that is comfortable and it's kind of it's a it's a bridge of sorts I guess um, between two disparate cultures and um, I know that you've always worked large since you started drawing just yeah. six years ago yeah but um, I know you've always worked large but 
what do you think what effect does that have on the viewer's experience or how do you think yeah. that serves your goal um, um i think it the one-to-one -one scale is is powerful because for most most times when you go into a gallery and you interact with art you compartmentalize it into it's this is art i interact with it on at this certain level and some people do that more or less and that might connect with you or it might not but it's still always art it's an object and um i i think that having the one-to-one -one scale and then i actually purposely don't frame them for shows i try to keep them like as, as close as possible to just you know what they are in the studio because it it forces the viewer to respond to it as a as a person and, you know, they walk into a gallery space. They're not surrounded by art. They're surrounded by, you know, they're surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. And it causes a very different sort of interaction. Um, and I think one that has more emotional uh, impetus than, you know, if I was to do smaller drawings that were these delicate little things about the same thing. Let's move on to your process. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are going to be interested in how the hell do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> slowly, very, very, very slowly. How many hours um, do you put into a single drawing? Every single one is different. Um, I My standard answer is somewhere around 100 hours, but I try not to count because I get depressed. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, probably around 100 hours per drawing if I average it out. Um, well, as I said, it starts with a photograph. Um, so I photograph the people and then bring that back to my studio, select the image from, from those you know, the images that I shot, and uh, the first step in the actual physical process is projecting the piece. Um, so I project in the basic dimensions, and I do a much tighter under sketch, um, and then I basically go from top to bottom, um, and uh, work my way down one square inch at a time. And it's pretty much finished as I go at that point. I don't, I'll go back in and do a little bit of fi fine tuning, but for the most part, it's um, working from the top left to the bottom right. I do it that way because I don't want to smear as I go, and yeah. so I rest the palm of my hand, you know, to the bottom right of wherever I'm actually working. So I'm always working kind of down to the right. And um, one thing that I really appreciate about your drawings is that they float on this perfectly white page. Everyone always asks me how I keep it from smudging all over, and I'm like, <laughs> by working very, very, very slowly. So you're yeah. not gonna like have a beer and then work on a drawing. Oh no, I do. <laughs> or well, Scott more than that, but yeah. Okay. Well, Joel, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you for sitting down with Art Statement. Thank you for having me. This was a total blast. <laughs>